Hi there, this is Vanessa Joy at Vanessa Joy here on Instagram, and I'm with you to talk to you about getting out of auto. You probably will enjoy this if you have a camera and you want to know how to use it more effectively. I'm going to break this down. You know, it's there's like 10 ways to skin a cat or whatever that phrase is. I'm going to break this down in the easiest way possible so you can just start getting shooting. Uh, we're also going to talk about perspective and just some things that you can do to improve your photography. And then we'll also get to the challenge that's going on right now with Create No Matter What, all about perspective, which you can enter. There's a huge prize pack. So welcome to my front porch. <laughs> Now, if you're going to learn or start trying to figure out photography, learn your camera, learn how to shoot in manual mode, I highly suggest that you do not start by shooting a subject because the last thing you need is to be chasing like your kids or someone who's sitting there impatiently waiting for you to photograph them and waiting for them to whatever while you're freaking out about your camera, all right? So we are going to photograph my front porch but I promise I can be fairly interesting and creative. I am shooting with the Canon uh, EOS R here. So this is a mirrorless camera. What I'm going to show you will apply to any camera. It does not matter what you have. I'm shooting with the 24 to 105 F4 lens. Again, what I'm showing you can work with any type of lens, ones that are less expensive than this. Uh, even if you have a camera that's kind of like a, like a Canon power shot or a GH, uh, what is the uh, oh I'm horrible I'm remembering all like the different camera names but even if you have something where it's not a separate lens and you have a manual mode this will apply to those types of cameras too so trust me stick around save this video come back to it and let me walk you through getting out of auto so first thing you want to do you want to change your mode so right now it's set to P some of you may have a dial here that has the P and you just want to either you know turn the dial or go into mode like I have to and then move over until you find M. M is where we are going to stay. You will see it stay right there. Or again, if you have a dial and you move that, great. But M mode is your full manual mode. There are three things that you are going to be changing in manual mode. Now, I suggest you stay in auto white balance. Uh, you'll be able to see that. The easiest way to do this here, I'm gonna go into, oops, not there. I'm going to just go here. You can see everything on the back of your screen. These are all the settings. You can also look at your white balance. If you see this AWB, that's auto white balance. Just stay there. That's not a setting that I want you to mess with right now. So the three things that you want to mess with are aperture, shutter, and ISO. If you are learning, I do want you to step outside, photograph somewhere where it's really bright. The last thing you want is to try to photograph indoors, somewhere dark, somewhere where you might need more light or better quality light because it's just going to add to more problems or more things that you have to solve. So go outside, somewhere bright, switch it to manual. Now the first thing I like to do is I like to set my aperture first. For me, or really for all of photography, the aperture is probably the biggest thing that changes the way that the picture looks. Without getting too much into the tech, the aperture affects how much of the photo will be in focus. So if you wanna take a photo, let's just say, and just have this chair in focus, or maybe just have this plant in focus, and everything else is blurred in the background, then you wanna get that aperture as low of a number as you possibly can. If you wanna photograph something where everything is in focus, then you want that aperture number to be as high as it can. So let's just show you which number is the aperture. The aperture is the number that has the F in front of it. I'm gonna tap that there. These are all the aperture numbers available to me right now. This does depend on your lens. I would like to take a photo with more of a blurry background. So I'm gonna go as low as I can, which is all the way down to F4. So that is item number one, the first thing I want to consider. The second thing I consider is my shutter speed. The shutter speed here, you'll see it as a fraction typically because it's how long the camera is taking the picture for in terms of a, t a second. So you can actually go all the way to one second here, but then these are all fractions of a second. So a 30th of a second, a 60th of a second, a 125th of a second. 
here's what you want to think about. You're looking at all these numbers and it's crazy. And you can see as I change my exposure, you can see the actual picture getting darker and lighter, which is really quite convenient, all right? What I want this number to be, the lowest number I want it to be is double whatever my highest number on my lens is, my highest focal length. This will ensure that you don't get as much camera shake and there's not gonna be all this blurriness happening. It's also going to help if you're photographing, you know, maybe one of your kids or a sports game. The higher the number is on your shutter speed, the more it will freeze that action. Now I'm not photographing, I'm not photographing sports or kids or anything moving, so I don't have to have it too fast, but I do want it again to probably be double whatever the uh, highest number on my lens is. Technically you could go a little bit lower than that, but let's give you some grace and you know give you a little bit of buffer room there. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to 250th of a second because I am at I could go to 200th of a second, but let's just go to 250th because I'm at least doubling that number. Now from there, I'm going to lastly set my ISO. Your ISO is determines how sensitive the sensor is to light. And the lower, oops, the lower your number, the less sensitive it is. Um, yeah, the less sensitive it is, so it gets darker. And as you go higher, the more sensitive it is. Now you usually don't want to go this high anywhere above 1600, definitely not usually around 3200 or higher, just because a camera, if you're watching this video that you have, might not be the world's top of the line camera. And the the higher the number, even though it's getting brighter, you're going to introduce noise. And noise is like, think of bad TV reception back in the day when you had bad TV reception. And it's like that staticky type thing. It almost looks blurry sometimes. So you want to try to get your ISO level as low as possible, but obviously getting good exposure. This is why I told you to come outside because outside will allow you to get a lower exposure. So now what you're going to do is you can eyeball this. So I'm looking at the back of my screen, looking at it as it gets lighter and darker. Some of the things to look for to know if it's too light or too dark. Let me go to 400. All right, if I'm here, notice how it's completely blown out here. There's no detail whatsoever. Let me just take a picture so you can see. There's absolutely no detail. It is 100% white. This means it's too bright. I chose an exposure that's way too bright. Let me zoom this out. Oh, there's some other stuff there. Uh, if I press info, and this is dependent on your camera, if I press info, you're gonna see all of your settings as well, so you can look at it. And then I have it set to, it blinks for me. If it's all overexposed here, it's going to blink, and that's telling me that it's too bright. Now this is only a little bit too bright because ideally I'm really photographing this chair right now, but still, let's go a little bit lower. So let's go ahead to our ISO and lower that to 250th. And that's a little bit better. All right, so let's get shooting. Thankfully, the clouds aren't coming in and out, so your exposure isn't going to change much on a day like this. But if you notice that it's getting lighter and darker and lighter and darker, things are gonna change. But all right, let's get shooting. Let's just say I wanna photograph this right here. I'm gonna photograph this, uh, whatever that is, my fake plants, because. I'm really bad. I can't, um, <laughs> I can't keep plants alive. All right. So let's photograph that. Now for me, I can just tap and focus, tap and focus. And it's funny when I go to photograph here, can you see, there we go. It actually looks a little bit too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and lighten my exposure a little bit. And then what I want to do, because I know that it's all blown out here, I'm just going to change my angle. I'm going to get a different perspective. And I'm going to come here where my thing I want to take a picture of is the same amount of brightness as the background. Okay? So if you look at it from this angle, come over here. The amount of light that's hitting right here is the same as the amount of light that's hitting those pillows back there. But if I was over here where I was before, if you want to get it from that angle, you can see the amount of light here is much darker than all the bright white sun back there. So positioning and changing your perspective is going to make a really big difference. So let's go ahead and take this photo. 
All right. So we have a pretty good exposure. I kept, again, that F4, so my background is more blurry. Let me take the info off so you can see. My background is more blurry. I do have some highlights blown out there, but it's not terrible. That's a pretty good shot. Now, this one was taken. I wasn't zoomed in all the way. Another way to change your perspective would be to zoom in more, and it's gonna change the way the photo looks. Now, I can't back up anymore, so we're just gonna go kind of close up on some of the plants here. So this photo, the background is actually even blurrier than the photo before it. You see the cross pattern in my chair there, whereas opposed to here, it starts to really fade away. So it gets even blurrier. All right, let's get a different perspective. I wanna back up all the way over here. Somebody had mentioned uh, the light meter. That's worth mentioning. The light meter? Yeah, just how to measure your exposure looking at the light meter. Uh, well, you can. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. So we're not gonna get into light meters and um, exposure evaluation and things like that. So we're making this as simple as possible. But if you want to, down here, there's a light meter and this is technically telling you when it's too bright or too dark. However, that's all relative to what you're actually photographing. So I'd much prefer you look at the actual picture and then after you take the picture, look at it, see what's blinking out and then hit info twice and you can look at your histogram here and your histogram will actually tell you, you know, you want it to, again, this is kind of, it's all subjective. So I don't actually even want to get into histogram and the light meter because that's subjective and that can be a whole nother video. All right, so let's look at this scene right here. I'm going to just take a photo kind of wide. Actually, let me start here because I want to get into the perspective part of this where we're talking about the perspective challenge. Now, right now we have a challenge going on. You can check out Adorama's Instagram videos and you can also go to the link in bio here on Adorama's Instagram and it talks all about the create no matter what hashtag we have going on and uh, the challenge, which is all about perspective. So here's what I want you to do. In addition to we're learning a little bit about getting out of manual, I want you to take a picture and then change your perspective perspective using your lens and where you're standing to create a completely different picture. So first off, I'm going to be nice and close and I just want to take a picture of my scene here, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my exposure just like I taught you before. I want to stay at f4. I'm at 120, uh, 1 250th of a second. ISO, I'm actually going to lower a little bit. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to just Take the picture here and I'm going to kind of come up and take a picture. Now that looks okay-ish, but it's not that interesting. Now here's how I want you to consider changing your perspective. Number one, I'm going to back up. So I'm actually going to turn my chairs a little bit so I know I'll be able to see a little bit more when I back up. And I'm going to, instead of shooting this at 24, a lot of people think, okay, I want to shoot everything. I got to be real wide, right? No. Instead, you can come on all the way over here and you can back up and I can shoot the same scene from back here, zoomed in. And it's going to create a different point of view, different way of looking at the image. So I'm not going to change my exposure or anything. We're just going to go ahead and I usually don't shoot like this, but I'm trying not to hit the mic because <laughs> every time I do lift the camera up to my face, this hits me. Let's try. There we go. All right. So now from here, I was zoomed in at about 90. The photo now became much more interesting as opposed to the one before. It looks kind of sparse in a way, but by backing up and I'll just zoom in a little bit here, it now looks like I have a nice cohesive front patio. Now the last thing I want to teach you to do, you can do something like this and the, you want to give yourself a little bit of foreground. So I could shoot with this, uh, but I think it's a little bit too dark. So what I'd prefer to do uh, is tear, can you reach this? I'm gonna have to climb, aren't I? I have to climb, I'll climb. <laughs> No, I'm good. Good. <laughs> okay. I want to create some foreground. So we're going to grab this, again, fake plant because 
I can't keep things alive. Ugh. Except my children, they're alive still. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of foreground. It's just gonna give more depth to the photo, perceived depth, because I've got something in front. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold this. It's also gonna add some nice color. It'll be fun. There we go. So now I have a little bit of foreground here. Add some perceived depth. Depth. <laughs> add some perceived depth. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna change this because it's a little weird that flowers would be coming out of here. And I would prefer to cover up all this blinky stuff there. So I'm actually gonna take this, hold it upside down and put it. Now this only works with fake plants. So now I'm pretty happy I only have fake plants. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it on the other side so I can hide that icky background I have. There we go, hold on. So now I have a little bit, I could probably do a little bit more, but now just a little bit more attractive and kind of covering up those parts there. Let me do it one more time. I want to actually back up a little bit. And this will probably be easier to do with, there we go. A little bit easier to do if I wasn't trying to one hand it, but. There we go. All right, this is a little bit better. Maybe a little bit dark, but you get the idea. So you've got your nice flowers here and you've got your scene going on there. So we just added some depth, covered up some things we didn't like. Maybe we could go a little bit lighter on the exposure. So let's go ahead and do that by taking our ISO and let's just raise it up a little bit and then we'll be able to see more of the color here with my fake plant. There we go. Much better. I like that better. Good. So now we've got more of the yellow coming around here. It just look, looks a little bit better than where we started, which was all the way up close like that. So just a little bit about getting your camera out of auto into manual, what those settings do, how you change them, how they affect your image, and then adding a little bit of perspective, whether you are moving back and zooming in or some, I guess it's called forced perspective where you're putting something closer to the lens just to add a little bit of depth. So I hope this was helpful for you. Make sure to check out the link in the bio of Adorama's Instagram. Again, I am at Vanessa Joy. See you next time.